In our classes so far, we had seen how to create a table in Oracle database, how to view the details available in the database, how to filter the records while fetching the details from the database. But we had not dived deep into the concept of inserting data into the database. Though we had seen in couple of classes how to insert the records into a table with the help of insert statement. But we didn't explain the syntax and the use cases which is revolving around the insert into syntax. We can insert the records into the Oracle's database tables with the help of this insert into statement. The insert into statement is one of the DML statements that is nothing but data manipulation language statements. So you can use it in order to store or insert the values into the table. So there is a prerequisite for this class. I have already created those two tables that is the toys and the bricks table. I have provided the syntax over here at the bottom of this script.txt file. So suppose I don't have any records available in the table right now I have just created. Let me just try to fetch the details available in the toys and the bricks table. Let me first run select star from toys. I am getting no data found. Similarly for the bricks table. I am also getting no data found for this. There is one more table as we had seen in our first class in this course that is the user tab columns. Here we will get the details of all the columns against the table name. Suppose if I run this query, I will get the details of all the columns that is brick ID color and it is part of which table and what is the data type all those things we will get. Currently we are having only bricks and toys table but in the actual oracle database like the ATP in the production scenario you will have a number of columns or the tables created for applications. Now this is related to select statement as we don't have any records or data available in either of the tables that is toys and bricks we will learn how we can insert. So we can make use of this insert into statement in order to add the records into the table. So we can add one row at a time with the help of this insert into. Also we will look at how we can bulk insert as well. The syntax is insert into we have to write then the table name followed by the column names within the round brackets then the values clause we have to write then within the round brackets we have to mention the values. So the columns list over here is optional. So if it is optional and omitted you have to mention all the column values like if we are having three columns then we should be sending three values over here separated by the comma. Suppose if you mention columns like out of three only two then we have to pass only two. If we omit columns then we have to pass the values for all the columns. It is mentioned over here what I have told just now. For example the following statement that is this one will add the record for a toy named Miss Snuggles colored is pink and the toy ID is one. Let me just copy this from here and I will paste it over here. Now what they have done is they have written this insert into clause then the table name values. They have omitted the column name. We can write the column name as well. If we do not write the column name then we have to provide the values for all the columns available in that toys table. Now this toys table is having three columns and it will be inserted as per the metadata available for that table or as per the precedence of the columns available while creating the table. Now let me just run this. Sorry I have to select entire row and then run. Yeah, I have inserted the record into the toys table. Now let me just run this and verify whether the record got inserted. Yeah, I could see one record which got inserted into the table. Now suppose I am removing one of the values from here and trying to insert. It won't insert because we are sending the less number of values compared to the columns available in the table. Now this is the issue what it is facing when we remove one of the values from here and if the columns list is omitted. Now we can overcome this by mentioning the list of columns over here like this. Now suppose I am mentioning the column names and then trying to send the less number of values. Like if I am sending only two values over here then I will mention the two is for toy id and baby turtle is for toy name. Let me just verify by running this. Yeah, it, the row got inserted. Now let me run this query and verify whether the row got inserted. Yeah. So we had sent only two values. One is for toy id and the toy name and the color we had left empty. So it has inserted the record accordingly. So you can optionally commit as well. If your database does not support the global commit then you can commit so that the record will persist in your database for the indefinite period of time. So it is always a good practice to mention the column names because in future in the production as part of maintenance you or your colleague might add columns or remove the columns from the toys table. In that case if your SQL query or the automation what you have written it should not fail then you have to mention the columns for which the data you are inserting into. Suppose you neither mention the column and the value for a particular table then that particular record will be inserted as null as we had seen in this case the color was null. 